Hey everybody, how y'all doing? Are you hey okay? In your neck are Let me dry them up. Too cool. Now go too deep, you know. Yeah, yeah, fair watch it, you know. Our troops, see that? Apple cider vinegar and our troops. Up at right, make them get saturated in the gravy and all of that. On today's episode of the Jamaican Cooking Journey, I will be sharing with you how to get done some crispy fried bangamary fish topped off with a nice sauce. So, we're gonna Get these fish all seasoned. I've cleaned and washed them thoroughly with the green lime and the rind juice. So, <clears throat> you know, bangamary is a sort of soft fish. So, as I said before, soft and crispy, as if we're making escovitch fish. And we're not going to make a escovitch pickle. We're going to make a sauce. So, we're going to use scallions and garlic, a little piece of a bell pepper, onions that I have here followed by some sauces that I have right there and um, a little <clears throat> a little tomato paste or tomato um, what's that thing camera girl? tomato paste or tomato the puree paste or the gel or whatever for the tomato no <clears throat> as I said it's a soft natured fish really technical to fry not really hard or technical but you know, oftentimes people try to fry it and it gets mashed up. So I'm going to demonstrate to you today in this video how you go about it. Now, <clears throat> the very first thing I want to show you is what I'm going to use to season my fish. And I'm going to point out a few little tips to you. Okay? Now, when frying fish, and you're using powdered seasonings. You need to use seasonings that are like powdery and not coarse. You know, sometimes some of the package, sometimes they're not artificial. They're, they're herbs and stuff, natural seasonings. But the ingredients are coarse. So I always try to find ingredients that are more on the powdery side and also that are natural mm? so in here I have a little salt I'm gonna be adding some ginger powder and this is just four little pieces of fish so you can just go ahead and try to do your thing if you're frying a lot of fish you know you want a whole lot of seasoning this is coriander powder derived from the seeds and this is so so underused in cooking well within our Jamaican cuisine when I say only for Jamaicans I use coriander powder but it's beautiful a little cumin of course which is strong so don't go too much that's good we're going to put some black pepper. Just reasonably refine the black pepper. And I, I don't want to make too much noise. I have four pieces of fish. And for me, this is good. Okay? I don't want to over season my fish. And two, you don't want to use too much seasoning with a powder, coarse powder, or soft powder. You don't want to use too much seasoning on the fish. Fish is of a mild consistency. Every fish. Mm? And I like chicken and pork where you want one bag of flavor for lacking at it. You see what I'm mean, saying? So, another thing too, when the seasonings are coarse and you use it to season the fish, you find that the seasoning starts burning when you're frying the fish and you're forced to turn the fish making the fish gets broken or get broke up and the fish is not properly cooked on the inside after we fry this fish here we are not going to be putting it down into the gravy it's going to be served crispy with the gravy topped on 
So we want the fish to fry properly, crispy and firm. I we not want no bun up fish. That is the part. I'm over that part. Let me remove these. Go on, let me again. Let's get back to the fish. These are my four pieces of fish and I'm about to dress just the top parts. Clean and nice and everything. These here, nothing much. You can just clip it up a bit if you want to. But not anything too extra. This part here now, <clears throat> you want to dress. This is dressing the fish. So we want to take off some of these pieces. You don't have to take them off all. If you wish to, you can do that. You just can just give it a little touch up, you know. And the men, them got the barber and said, them are going to get a line up. Yeah, them just are fresh up. Yeah. Now, in order for you to get these fish crispy, you have to make sure, say, these fish or any other fish, the fish must be properly tried. Properly tried. Mm -hmm. This is what we are doing. Yep, properly tried fish. The inside you take out those excess moisture and remember these fish look like they don't have scales but they do have scales they have some fine scales so try to make sure you examine them properly they do have scales get it dried and remember this process you know it now go take out all the moisture out of it the, the um what's this thing the antowil or the kitchen towel or kitchen cloth or rag will never be able to take out this extra moisture the frying process will but you're not going to fry it until it dry and burn up and back you know you know so you want to get that going i'm pre-eating my skillet right there so i'm going to be pre-eating it on a medium with the oil i'm going to let the oil pre-eat mediumly I'm not going to let the oil overeat and I put the fish in there. That is another thing too. And the fish starts frying on too much of a high temperature. And then you go now, you're forced to turn it and it breaks up because the heat is too high and this fish is not ready for turning it. I'm going to demonstrate to you. Cause I will if a fish I go cook now in a cause. We're getting into the length and period coming up anytime soon. Okay. So, okay, family, I knew I forgot something, so I had to add a little garlic powder. I knew I forgot something, so this is okay. It's mixing itself. It has space, yeah. So, look at this. Really, really powdery. Doesn't have a lot of coarse grains. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm going to start with a piece of the top. And you know what? Over seasoning either, as I told you. You have to put your hand in there. These fish, they don't carry a lot of bones. Okay? So, and two, very importantly for these, you don't core these. Don't core them. You core them, you might find yourself in trouble. Breaking up. Alright, so I'm going to show you. With just one piece, be careful. Even though they don't have a lot of bones, you just want to coat it. If you hear a little season, my garlic is over there. Right on over here, I'm pre-eating. On a medium, you see how my garlic is frying? Yeah, with the bubbles them in the bottom. Yes, that's how you pre-eat your frying pan or your oil. And I'm using some garlic there to flavor the oil. You know, most time we do with fish. You see it? So you don't want when you season you have this whole lot of hard grain. So try to keep away from the seasonings with the hard grains. I think this about does it for, we're just gonna show you one piece and you put it right there. I'll come back when we're ready to start frying. All seasoned and I'll be frying due to the, 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 the shape of my, uh, my frying pan. I'll be frying two pieces per batch. So this is the oil, mediumly heated. 
I think what you want to do, you want to put them in there and we are going to let them fry, family, at this stage until they are ready to turn. When they are ready to turn, I'll come back to you and show you, or I'm going to come back to you before they are ready to turn and show you what will throw you into problems with this. Let's catch it. Okay, now, we are here. And these are the fish, and you see, it's building this little arm. These are like juices that came out from it. So you'll come and look at it and see catching color. It can move, but <clears throat> it is moving in this frying pan, which I didn't even realize. It is like a sort of non-stick. It is a very good quality, but if it was a Dutch pot, it would show you that it cannot be turned. You might want to try turning it. Look at it. See it? It's not ready, even though it's moving. You have got to give it time to fry it until it, it is properly, properly fried. The pace, the medium pace at which it is frying, gives it enough time on the medium here to get super crispy that it holds, it steers together. It must fry on the medium until it is super crispy, super firm. This is not like a snapper you can take some chance with a snapper because they are firm fish these are not the firm type and if you are somebody that cooks it and every time you cook it try to fry it it break up and you get you know say i'm just frustrated i don't want to cook this fish anymore this is all you have got to fry it until when you're ready to turn it and you see it is firm and have that brownness on that there i would say 20 minutes 15 to 20 minutes on each side on the medium in a thick bottom skillet try not to deep fry i really don't like to deep fry these but if you do and it work out kudos to you so i'm gonna fry until they are ready to turn and come back to you we have flipped this piece and i'm showing you that it is ready to turn look at this piece it's still not ready to turn still soft this piece is ready okay so that's all you want it looking firm you see it firm to the touch and it could still stay a little more that's all you you really try that is how you approach these banga mary fish to get them all crispy now we'll be frying off the other two pieces in just this same manner and when we return we're going to show you how we're going to make this little gravy little sauce with the onion i'm going to show you what i'm going to put together and for you know to split up something for you Now, family so these are my fried banga mary we have them right there we're gonna make our our, our sauce our gravy what you want call it you know we jamaican a gravy we say now what i've done right on over here let me take you over here you know and i know some people are gonna say get to the point you chat too much listen you might be someone who are first in the kitchen Mm -hmm. I have over 250,000 subscribers on this channel here and you might be looking on and don't think about yourself there are hundreds of thousands of that are um, more than half of that they would like to see this they would like to get more in preparing Jamaican dishes for whatever their reason there are young ladies coming up that are starting a family they need to know how to do stuff. They go grocery shopping and when they see stuff, they leave it because they're not over prepared. They are being enlightened right here. Okay? So if you are a pro at doing it and you know want to see that the part or you want to see an expert, you just have to wait until the other part that he wants to see come because I'll be doing it in depth. And at this point, I want to pause and to say thank you. Thank you both to male and females who have reached out and said, Debbie, these videos that you're putting out, they are so informative. They have helped me so much. I would like to make a contribution. I want to say thank you. Thank you so much for your contribution. And I want to tell you, it's just the same set of people that does it over and over again. Thank you so much. And if you're there 
and you'd like to know how to make a contribution towards my channel in the description of this video and all my other videos and lives there will be all my information the description is below the video there some people don't know how to get to the description okay so below each video to the right hand corner there is a little down arrow click on it and it will bring you into the description let's get back to cooking now i've finished and this is my oil this is how my oil looks inside there don't mind these are the stuff we can take out some we might not be that have to take out all they're just flavors down in there i've removed the excess oil and in the interim my oil my pot is cooling down very important when you are doing these sort of frying and then going back to use the same um pot to make the gravy especially the fish let it cool down don't throw it in there with that heat it just droop all your drapes are everywhere i go absorb it very important let it cool down now mine has been cooled down I'm gonna put in some scallions. You know, say I feel me sitting that. Okay. So now that you put in the scallions, I'm gonna put my heat back on. Okay. So remember, let your pot cool down. You won't have so much of that thing in your house, and the fish thing here can be so so strong. I'm using these two pegs of garlic that I used to flavor the oil. They are still still good. In fact, they come in like a roasted garlic. They are so soft. So when you use a garlic to flavor the oil, I want you to tell me. When you use your garlic to flavor the oil, what do you do with it? You throw it out? If you used to do that, you know you have to do that anymore. So I'm putting in my thyme right here, and it is going to stay there. You can up your flame a little, but remember to come back. Now, right on over here, I want to show you that, and you have to cover this loosely. Don't cover it and let it get all soft. I have my onion rings, I have a piece of scotch bonnet pepper, it's frozen, and I have some green bell peppers. You do too what you want, I mean I really too like too much of the green what about bell pepper, and it's just too strong. Right here I have some of the, this balsamic vinegar, I use a little more, and I use just a pinch of the malt vinegar. When they put, we are put together, they give such a beautiful flavor and I have dissolved in there just about a teaspoon of brown sugar and I'm mixing it with some tomato paste to get a, a you know, a sort of little jelly. You know you have to be riding a whistling because I'd actually say right down over here. Yes. Yeah. Getting it all in there. And you know at all times when we start cooking over here, we always up for our kettle with a little hot water that one wasn't so hot and we are gonna let it come to a boil with a scallion sorry yes with the scallion the thyme and the garlic so we're mixing this out yeah and this is the color can you know I get it too dark you know we're gonna black up the onion then all of them something there. so we are doing this we're gonna get it come to we're gonna give this a little time to start boiling Yeah, and we soon come back. Now so this is time to put in this little goodness here. And you don't have to do this, family. I want you to do your own, make your own. I have a few people that send me pictures on Instagram. Some of them send it to my direct message. This is what we have in here. And it's going to become a little thick. So this is the color we are opting for. You choose your color. Gonna put a little more, and as it boils, we want it. We just want it to get a little boiling. Our onions are still green in there. So what you wanna do now, you want to do a little tasting. Look at, think about what you're looking for from me right here. I only need a little salt. Gonna get that in our return. I've added my salt and I'm gonna add these. You can put little carrot sticks or anything you want, you want to do. I'm just gonna let these stay in there. You could sprinkle, yes, a little black pepper. A little extra black pepper would be good. Now you're gonna turn it down. I'm gonna put the little black pepper and I'm gonna cover it just for probably a minute just to let these 
onions and the little bell pepper there. You don't want the onions getting too saggy now, even though you're making a gravy and not a pickle. So we're going to get a little black pepper in at the top, cover it. And when I return, I'll be spooning on that sauce on top of that crispy fried banga mary. From my kitchen to yours, from my Jamaican kitchen to your family table to your palate and most of all to your stomach, it is crispy fried banga mary topped with a nice juicy flavorful um, tomato paste sauce. Please do enjoy. Thanks for the love, thanks for the support. Remember to be you, do you. Most of all, love you some Jamaican cooking in your kitchen.